welcome to another video on my channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a late 2008 MacBook Pro. We're going to be installing this RAM kit, 16 gigabyte, and a 500 gigabyte solid state, which is going to be refurbished. Now, I'll also be showing you how to get into internet recovery, which will allow you to recover the operating system if, for whatever reason, it's lost or you just want to start fresh. So let's get into it. Now, the first thing you're going to need is a Phillips head screwdriver. Um, obviously, we're going to be using the iFixit kit. You might need a star bit as well because the hard drive mounting screws that hold in the solid state or hard drive are some weird star bit ones, but I'll show you shortly. So all we gotta do is go ahead and flip the laptop around. Then we gotta take out these screws along the, the edge. Now there are different sizes, but as you can see, the smallest ones are gonna be about this size. So you're gonna wanna put them somewhere where you won't lose them. Now I got a lot of holes in this table. So if I put them down somewhere, they're probably gonna fall in. So we're gonna be using this as a little table. Now I believe these three screws are gonna be the longest, uh, so you can kind of just determine that way. If you wanna map it out, I recommend you use like a magnetic pad or something. I've taken a lot of these MacBooks apart, so I really don't need to do that. I think I will be all right. All right guys, so all the screws are out. Now all you gotta do is put your fingers in the rear of the laptop as it's upside down and pull straight up and they'll take the back panel off. Now it's already got a solid state in here, but I think I'm going to be replacing it because Samsung has a really high failure rate. From what I've noticed, just from my experience, I've seen a lot of Samsung SSDs fail. So I'm gonna put something a little more reliable in. Now to take out the drive and the drive cage, all you gotta do is take out these two screws here. They will not fully come out. Um, you can force them out, but I don't recommend doing so. All you gotta do is take this little adapter piece off from there, take that out then put your finger in there or use a screwdriver, pull up on this side, pull out, and then remove the SATA connection. And then you got the hard drive out. We've got a 500 gigabyte 860 Evo. I'll probably use this for something else. As you can see, the screws are a weird star bit. So we got to find that bit, but yeah, star bit. So we got to find that bit. I believe I have one here somewhere. I could be, it's not technically the right one, but it's getting the screws out. That's all that matters. All right, all you got to do is remove these screws from the solid state, put them somewhere where you won't lose them. I've got spares. So if I lose them, I'm not super worried about it. Alrighty guys, so once you get all the screws out, you're gonna have this drive. You can do anything you want with it. If you're lucky and you've got a solid state, you could use it as a backup drive, even if it's a hard drive. Now all you gotta do is repeat the process, but backwards. All you gotta do is take the screws that you just took off the old one and put it on the new one. Now what I would recommend doing is trying to thread them in just a wee bit on each side before you screw them in. Just cause if you try to do it just with the screwdriver, you can drop them. I've dropped these many, many times. Like I said though, I'm not super worried if I drop them, I've got plenty. And once you get the screws in, you can see you got these little mounts. You're just going to plug the SATA in, push it in sideways, put it down, and then put this black retention piece back in. Very simple. Uh, you don't actually have to tighten these very much. Tighten them to a good degree. Don't over tighten them. It won't really hurt the solid state any, but the plastic can get degraded or stripped. Uh, just, just keep that in mind. So push it down, then grab your Phillips bit back. You want to make sure the orange piece is facing you when you put this in. Make sure these two orange pieces are facing you. Otherwise, it's... I mean, you can do it this way, but I don't think it'll sit properly. It'll still bounce up and down. You wanna make sure it's facing you, put it down flush and then screw it in. Now, if you ever have to replace the SATA cable here, this is the cable for it. It's gonna go down here. You can actually order these on, I don't know, eBay or Amazon. All you gotta do is take the whole drive out and take this retention piece off. And then this has adhesive that's stuck to the inside of the laptop, which also has a light, which will indicate if there's a problem with the, the device. All you gotta do is replace that. Um, if you guys wanna see a video on that, let me know. I've got plenty of parts. I can easily do a video on that. So now for the RAM, uh, we're obviously gonna open up the RAM. Now that we got the RAM open, we're gonna go ahead and install this. Now keep in mind, when you do install RAM, you need to find the correct RAM. I recommend you go to Crucial's website and find out the correct RAM or go on Amazon, put the model number of the MacBook in and Amazon will show you the correct uh, RAM that'll you know be supported for this MacBook. Only because the timings and the speed are can vary on devices. It, sometimes it won't boot if you have the wrong RAM in. So we're gonna take the old RAM out and you can do that by pushing, pulling out on both sides. And once the RAM comes fully up, you might have to fedangle with it a little bit just because the these retention pieces are annoying. Now you can keep the old RAM for spare. Uh, I mean, this is a four gigabyte kit, so it's not not great, but I mean, it doesn't matter. Uh, if you're gonna use your MacBook for Linux, four gigabytes is more than enough. But since we're gonna be putting macOS back on this, we're gonna want at least eight gigabytes, but we're gonna have 16. So this will help quite a bit. Now to install the RAM, just make sure the key lines up with the inside of the socket. So you're just gonna uh, line it up, push it in, push down and then it's going to line up, and then your RAM's installed. Now we can go ahead and install the back panel. You're more than welcome to test it, but I know these parts work, so I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm gonna go ahead and put the back panel back on. Alrighty, now that you got everything installed, you're more than welcome to open it, test it, confirm it works. You can do that before you close up the panel. As I stated before, I know it works. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and quickly show you how to get into the internet recovery. It's a very simple task. It's not really much you need to do. So what you wanna do is you wanna, when you turn on the machine, make sure you're holding down Command and R, click the power button. 
once it fires up, just give it a few minutes and it's going to plop right in the internet recovery. You do want to have it plugged in, but I think the battery is okay. Long enough for me to at least have a chance to plug it in before I actually have to plug it in. And what it's going to do on screen, now once you go into internet recovery, this screen's going to pop up. It's basically telling you you need to connect to a network. You can plug this in via Ethernet or connect to a wireless network. I do recommend Ethernet. It's a lot quicker and faster. It's also more stable than, uh, you know, your wireless network, especially if you don't have a good internet connection. Having it plugged in via Ethernet will probably you know, prevent the result of, you know, it, it failing the internet recovery. What it's going to do is it's going to put the last known operating system on here, which means you will have to update it if it supports it. Now, since this is a 2008 late model, it's probably not going to support too much. I'm going to attempt to get as far as I can because it does have a decent CPU in here. If it doesn't work, either Linux or Windows is going to go on it because Windows will run on this thing, no problem. Alrighty, guys, once you get into the disk utility, you can go to straight to reinstall OSSX, but first you're going to want to go ahead and do disk utility. Go to disk utility, click continue going to go to the solid state that you have that you want to install the operating system on or the one you just installed or the hard drive go ahead and click it this touchpad sucks go ahead and click erase i'm just going to leave it untitled but you can name it whatever you want now uh you're probably wondering where apfs is this operating system does not support it this is like mountain lion or something so you can just leave it mac os extended journal and then you can transfer it over to aps once you upgrade it so click erase click erase you want to make sure you erase it because you, you got to have it so the operating system can read it so it can install to it. Now once it's done erasing, you can go ahead and go up to Disk Utility, click Quit Disk Utility, go to Reinstall OSS, OSSX, yep, Mountain Lion just confirmed it, click Continue, click Continue. Now once it's done, go ahead and click Agree, click on the solid state that you want to install it on, and then click Install. What it's going to do is it's going to install it. It may restart a couple times, so ignore that, it's completely normal. But that is how you guys use internet recovery along with setting up disk utility and getting Mac, uh, Mac OS installed. Well guys, that is how you disassemble a 2008 late MacBook Pro and install a solid state and RAM. If you guys enjoyed this video, drop a like. If you guys did not enjoy this video, please drop a dislike. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. If you guys have any comments for future videos, let me know in the comments below. I've got tons of stuff down here to do videos on. Give me an option. It could be more about MacBooks. I have plenty of parts. If you guys want to see how to build one, I could do that too. It's really not that hard. These, these laptops are very easy and very versatile, and they're an amazing laptop if you can get your hands on one. Make sure it's at least 2011 or newer just because you don't want anything. And don't go above 2015. The 2015s are junk. But thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next video, and peace out.